Hey everybody, it's Rothbard's Disciple here, and I'm bringing you guys uh, an interesting video today where I focus on how we can use Bitcoin to help uh, musicians. And I'm going to use a specific example of a musician who, like, he's like a, a, a songwriter, a singer, a dancer. He's got a lot of talents, but specifically because of his talents, uh, he could utilize the blockchain. Uh, in ways that could exponentially increase the uh, the profits he receives from these talents, you know, because uh, it's very hard. I don't know how many of you are aware to make it in the artistic industries. I'm, you know, I try to make it as a writer. Um, I haven't been writing as much as I should recently. I've been focusing on other entrepreneurial ventures. But anyways, uh, you know, you can write for a very long time, or you know, in the in the case of the person we're going to be talking about, you can, you know create music for a very long time uh, and not make any money from it uh, but 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 what I love about Bitcoin is that Bitcoin allows you to extract the intellectual property that you put into the goods that you create so that's the problem with uh, getting started as a musician is you need to have a wide user base before people will really buy your CDs um, and but everything that you do to create your CD costs money so there's a big initial investment uh, like you got to do you like if you don't want to put a l money into your, like promoting yourself you have to be like the best of the best so it just makes it makes it very hard to make it as a musician and then uh, in addition to that you know if you're gonna be a musician if you play with a band that can make things easier or whatever but uh, you know then you got to find other people to work with or you know if you work with other people in any way you've got to find the people to work with you got to find the right people and it makes things very hard um, and one of the real benefits of the blockchain is that it allows you to store hashes of your IP on the blockchain. And all that this does is it proves, it gives you a basically a trail of breadcrumbs of what you have created uh, in terms of a, like a digital good of some sort. And the way you do this you'll, is you'll just save specific points in the creation of this digital good, okay? And so I'm going to show you guys uh, specifically what I'm talking about here. Um, who I'm talking about is, uh, the guy's name is Chris Hull. Um I hope I said that correctly. It's a, little, it's a very unique name. But, um, and I don't know if that's, you know, just a stage name. I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, It'd be interesting to know the backstory on his name, but anyways, he's very talented. He's got a great voice. He's also like he's got some videos you can find out there where he's got some great dance moves. Um, some of these videos that he makes, um, they also have uh, music videos. Like this one's uh, the Going Thunder is a uh, music video that he has. Um, and then yeah, you know, he's just got a bunch here. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys this is because I want to show you guys visually how you can use uh, the block, a blockchain and hash tables in order to secure your IP. And again, you don't secure your IP so that you can like keep your IP away from people. You secure your IP so that you can share your IP and you can reap, you know, potential future benefits. And again, you guys got to understand that as a beginning artist already, I guarantee, like unless I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but Chris Will probably doesn't make a huge amount of money. He's not probably wealthy, I would assume. I would just assume, like you either make it really big as an artist or you're sort of struggling. Like some people can do it as a side job and make a decent amount of money as a side job. You know, some people can do it full time and get by doing it. I don't know exactly what stage he's at, but if he were to use the blockchain, he'd be able to completely like all this work he's trying to do when he tries to make this uh, music video for Going Thunder and I don't, you know, I don't want to criticize here, but Chris will his music and his dancing like super great. His making of mu music videos is pretty good, but his music and dancing are better. So I actually prefer the versions where you just listen to it. And part of the reason for this too is what I'm going to show you here further on is that these these different things that he's doing that Chris Wool is doing, like every single part of what he's doing here in making this music video, from making the music, from doing the dance moves, from, you know, whoever created the script, I guess, for this music video, whoever, like all these different things, through the blockchain, he can actually get other people to help work on this music video he's creating, and then he can, uh, give them part ownership in his creation. And so I'm going to show you guys just first off what uh, uh, this looks like on the blockchain. It's real simple. So this this CD that I guess I bought from Krishul, uh, it had four 
or this album or whatever. It had uh, four singles on it. It had I Don't Even Care, Going Thunder, Mama Africa, and Weightless. Um, and those were all the four uh, pictures I showed you again. Um, but these are the, uh, the hashes of the files that I received. Now, depending on the way these were, these uh, digital file files were distributed uh, like if you go and buy this uh, album yourself you probably should get this same hash as a result from these files um, the reason why I say probably is that because depending on how the files are saved and distributed like it can change the hash of the file so what I mean by that is like if you have a word document and you save it and you don't do any changes to the word document and you save it again because the word document has a different date it has a different hash sometimes or it depends on the operating system you're using but anyways there's like hashes are very exact so I can't say for sure if you buy the album you'll get this exact hash but this is the hash I got from the album that I bought so anyways um, these hashes on the left side, obviously, uh, these, these four hashes that are on the top are the hashes for, for the album. And if you look at beneath that, um, the hash starting with 726, uh, that's the root hash for the entire album. Okay, So if I were trying to buy this album, and I wanted to buy Krishul's album, and I wanted to be sure that this was Krishul's album, he would, have, he would give this root hash... Uh, with that album to verify its integrity. Now he can also, uh, you know, give this root hash with some sort of, uh, you know, public key signing or some sort of thing, uh, or you know, some sort of signature that proves his identity. So it makes it so that it, you can be sure that not only is it the correct file, but it's Krishul's file. Um, so you can go one step beyond this, but we're not going to get into that. Um, but where this gets interesting is uh, once you've posted this hash to the blockchain, uh, what you can do is, is Chris Will can he can make a smart contract where he just says, "Hey, look, like for uh, the music video he made, Going Thunder, um, he can be like, look, I made this music video for this. Uh, obviously, as you can see, it's got 742 views right now. Um, so it's not like you know, it's not like it's getting Taylor Swift views." Um, and obviously, I, you know, if you actually listen to his music, uh, he's a very good musician, and he's also a very good dancer. And so that gives you a lot of uh, that gives you a lot of potential for a music video because you can do a lot of low cost things like with a dancer. The one thing you got to worry about with a music video, if you're creating a music video, is you got to keep the cost low, right? And so the if you're a dancer, you can make you know sort of any background to some extent work because your focus is on the dancing. Now, obviously, if you're making a music video, you want the music video to stand on its own. But what I'm saying here is that someone like Chris will give someone who wants to write music videos. Uh, it, it gives them a lot of potential, you know what I'm saying? So for someone like myself, I'm a writer. I've never written a music video. Um, I've always thought it would be interesting. This would be something I would love to try my hand at. But if I looked at something like the Going Thunder music video and I was like, hey, look, I love this song. You know, I think you're a great dancer. Um, but I think I could make you a, or write you a better music video, you know, then I could write my own music video. And let's say I wrote this script for the... Uh, music video, uh, it looks like actually I have written down here on this picture here, I wrote the music video for I Don't Even Care. Um, so let's just say I wrote the music video for I Don't Even Care, and I actually chose I Don't Even Care because it's, it's my favorite song so far. I've li listened to each one of these songs quite a few times, but I, don't, I haven't actually seen the lyrics for all of them, so you know, I don't necessarily know which one I like best or which one I would like to write. Uh, a music video for because it's the best way to write a music video is to write a music video about a you know a song that has some sort of meaning to it and I, li I like the meaning behind I don't even care but if I were trying to write a music video for I don't even care which again actually if we look at this I don't even care it's it, as far as I know there's no music video for it so this makes it actually perfect so I don't with going thunder he's got his own music video it's pretty good he can let that stand with I don't even care there is no music video and I actually preferred that uh, song so if I were making a music video for I don't even care um, I would write the script for this music video and I would hash that script okay 
and then again, like I said, you could put some sort of signature with this hash so he could verify that, hey, he's getting this script from Rothbard's disciple, and I can, you know, have associated with my identity all the scripts of everything I've ever written before, so he can look at my life's work just for as like a preview of it, or, you know, just skim through it just to see, like, hey, does this guy actually, like, is he any good? But anyways, uh, I could hash my script for the music video, I don't even care. Now, obviously, obviously, if you're writing a music video, you, that, that wouldn't be something that I would be able to sell to Krishul at this point. There would be absolutely no way. So, what we would do is we would adopt some sort of smart contract where we say, Hey, look, uh, here's my script for a music video for I don't even care. Um, you can have this for free. Um, so long as if you use this script for a muse like a, a video that you release later on, or if you use this script as a basis for it, you'll give me some sort of agreed upon percentage, you know, whatever it is. Maybe I'll say like you'll give me, you know, five percent of the profits, not of return, but of profits. Um, <laughs> which, you know, might that might take years to, to to occur but if you do this all on the blockchain and if you do it all with uh, wallets like if you have your identity associated with a wallet then you can all do that do this all through a smart contract and so long as you don't delete that wallet and again like if, if you think long term in the Bitcoin space you're gonna have actual banks that are you know in control of these wallets and so the your, your wallets really aren't gonna get deleted but if you have um, if, if these wallets aren't deleted, then it doesn't matter if Krishul takes, you know, five more years for him to pop off and go big if he actually makes a music video for I Don't Even Care and if he uses my script for it and it's five years down the line and we don't even know each other anymore, he can still directly pay me because he already has all my information and he has my wallet address on the blockchain and there's already a smart contract set up, you know. And so I can verify and guarantee my IP for years, like for so long. And you can guarantee that the work you do, like that you will get paid for it, you know, that nobody gets taken advantage of. And this is better for everybody involved because it makes everybody more confident going forward that, hey, I'll do this work for you. To, you know, you don't have to pay me now. Uh, you just got to give me some sort of uh, ownership of the project, okay? And so, like, it, it might be, like, it sort of changes the game because what this actually does... Uh, for those of you who uh, are sort of paying attention and understand this idea, is it merges the world of what you would call open and closed source programming, except for, when I say programming, I mean like programming in the broadest sense of like creating things, you know, like any sort of intellectual or digital good. Um, and so w when I say you bridge the gap between the open and closed source programming, what I mean by this uh, in open source programming, the reason that open source programming and things like Ubuntu can compete with things like Windows is that with Ubuntu, it's just people who go and work on it, and they work on the things that they want to work on. So they're they're driven by their own personal drive, their own personal, you know, that just by doing what they love and what they want to do. Okay, and so that actually that incentive actually competes with the profit incentive of Windows where Windows like they make a profit so they're gonna work hard and do their best at it um, but obviously sometimes with Windows people come in and they're doing work they don't want to do so they're not working that hard with uh, things that are open source you basically never do work that you don't want to do because if you don't want to do it they basically don't do it because there's no profit incentive that makes them do it okay so when you when you take something like a blockchain and you can take something like uh, the creation of a music video like I said and I can guarantee my IP, like if I want to create a script for a music video for Krishul, and when I said before maybe 5% of profits, 5% of profits for writing a script is probably insane. It's probably more like, you know, pay me, you know, 0.5% of profits if you only write the script. If I were actually involved in creating the music video, that would be different, but um, it'd be a very small payment to me. But I could guarantee that you know, if Krishul makes it big, in five years, I could actually get paid that, you know, and obviously, long term, like, if without the blockchain, because there's no uh, immutable pl public ledger that exists, uh, there's no way for me to guarantee my IP in a way that I can, you know, guarantee, guarantee it publicly, uh, based on, like, because obviously, if you guarantee publicly for uh, five years, like, your IP on a blockchain, you can guarantee that because nobody can go back five years and change all that proof of work. Like, that's stupid insane to even think about. Um, so, this is what I mean when I say, you know, 
people are really underestimating what Bitcoin does for intellectual property and how Bitcoin changes the game for intellectual property. What it does is it allows you to take piece by piece, like beyond just, you know, Chris Rule having me potentially write a music video for him. What about like him having his uh, dance moves choreographed by a professional chore you know, choreographer? Um, I don't know potentially, you know, I don't know anything about dancing, um, so maybe Chris has got it all covered, you know, or whatever, but he could have, he could have that, you know, farmed out to somebody else and have them help with that, um, he could also have, uh, professional musicians work on his music or something, you know, like, uh, maybe some guitarists come in, you know, throwing some guitar riffs into what he's doing, uh, I know there's some acoustic versions of some of the things that he has here, I think there's an acoustic version he has of Going Thunder, but, um, you can have all these different professional musicians, or, you know, they can even be amateur musicians just from around the world who can work on his project, and he doesn't ever have to meet them, he doesn't have to go to their city, uh, he just has to post his stuff on a blockchain, and then there has to be some website that hosts this, uh, the files that are posted to the blockchain and allow people to, uh, you know, use them and upgrade them and try and work on them and try and create a finished product. And these are the things that I think are really interesting with, with blockchains. But, uh, yeah, I hope that sort of explained that a little bit better to you. Um, I really enjoyed using the example of somebody else this time. The things I try to do with blockchains are weird usually, so they're a lot harder to explain. Uh, explaining musicians and music videos uh, was a lot simpler. But uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there will always be uh, more coming out soon. If you want to, uh, feel free to donate, but also feel free to uh, go to... You know, Chris Shule's channels, um, not all these videos that I have posted are from his channel directly, but as you can see, they don't have that many views, and it's kind of insane to me, because like I said, he's got really good music, and he's a really good dancer. Um, the ones that are music videos, like I said, the music videos are decent, but it's really hard to make a really good music video with a low budget. It, like, it's very hard to do. So, like, if you just listen to the music, you can tell, like, he's, he's very good, and it sort of boggles my mind when I see someone who has this low views, when they're that good at what they do you know sometimes it boggles my mind how few views i get um, but then i realize i'm talking about cryptocurrencies and economics and philosophy and all these things and i'm like that's not that you know interesting and then i look at someone who's as talented as chris who is um, and if you look at those music videos even though those, those music videos aren't like you know they're not like something you know taylor swift puts out they're not that quality but they're they're pretty damn good you know i know other people who are like chris Rule who are trying to make it and his videos have a much higher production quality um there are a lot of good things about that video but in you know only 742 views it's like that's insane to me but anyways he's got you know music available for purchase as well um so not only you know consider donating to me but consider purchasing that music um i know i <laughs> watch the videos a bunch of times on youtube and then purchase the uh purchase them myself but uh it always helps to uh you know give money to people who are <laughs> doing things that help out. And the other thing, too, actually, that's actually more important than any of that um, is if you can get people who are within the Bitcoin community to build an application uh, that allows people to do this. So I don't know if, Chris, will, if you made it to the end of this video, but if you understand this and how you can, you know, just post different songs that you create to the blockchain and then try and, you know, create smart contracts to, you know, finish those songs up or make them even better or create music videos to those songs or, you know, whatever it is what you want to do and you want to create, you can, you have, you know, you've got the power and you just, you can put those smart contracts up on the blockchain and see who comes and see who's willing to work with you. And I'm serious though, like, you, you know, Chris has got some moves, guys. He's he can sing, and though like the one thing that's really great about this is because since like with with a blockchain, you isolate each area of production from the creation of the music, the songwriting, the creation of the music video, uh, the writing of the script for the music video, any part where you can put some sort of digital file onto the blockchain, you isolate that area. And so since Chris Will is not only a musician but a songwriter. Uh, or I don't know if he's a musician, he's a songwriter and a singer and a dancer. Those are all very important and valuable things for the creations of things like music videos. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for somebody like that. And so if you can create, like, if someone can get an application built for something like this, then, uh, you know, somebody like Chris Will could actually start making more money doing this and maybe he could do it full time and, you know, 
just sort of spread the music, you know what I'm saying? Spread the music. That's what we need to start doing. And that's why when I see a lot of people um, spreading the idea that money is the killer app with Bitcoin, like that might be technically true, but we should really be focusing on the non-monetary uses because that's really where the magic is. Like everybody knows what money is and the fact that Bitcoin's more efficient money. It's like that's not a good, that's not a great story. That's not a selling point. But if you can take somebody like Chris Hull, give him a give him a platform so that he can put up all of his work, like his life's work, all the stuff he does, the dancing, the singing, the songwriting, uh, the creation of his music videos, all this stuff, and so then he can perfect each aspect of it through the help and collaboration of people across the world uh, like that's magic you know what I mean that's magic that's making music happen <laughs> it's literally making music happen um, but that's really what I want to see with Bitcoin and that's really what I think is going to make you know whether it's Bitcoin cash or whatever I think whoever captures that market captures the title of Bitcoin and I hope it's Bitcoin cash um, but we don't have the applications yet. And that's where my frustration really comes from that you guys see all the time is that we don't have the applications yet to to make the magic happen, to make the music, and that's what we need. But anyways, um, there will be more videos coming out soon. I hope you enjoyed this.